All right, here we're going to do some examples related to the derivatives of the trig function. So here's all the formulas again. So the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, the derivative of tangent secant squared, the derivative of secant is secant tangent, the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent, and the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So maybe a little pointer, uh, just a little tidbit on how I remember them. Um, you know, the derivative of sine and cosine, I just kind of have those memorized. You can derive all of the others using just uh, quotient rule, uh, chain rule, and trig identities. So all the others um, you can derive pretty easily um, as long as you remember a couple identities. But one thing I remember, just kind of a couple things to help me. Notice the derivative of cosine and cosecant and cotangent, all of those are, have the minus sign associated with them. So the derivative of the co-functions um, have the negative associated. And then I remember, um, you know, kind of a... So, okay, so the derivative of, of tangent is secant squared. Well, if you put co in front, we would get cotangent equals cosecant squared. But then I just remember the minus sign. So if I can remember tangent is to secant squared, then I remember cotangent is to cosecant squared. But again, I'm doing a co-function, so I need a minus. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. Well, the derivative of cosecant is cosecant cotangent. And again, I just remember to tack on the minus sign. So um, anyways, that's one thing that I always think about. Um, I still actually do that. You know, whenever I see the derivative of tangent in a, or cotangent in a problem, I really think about the derivative of tangent for just a moment, um, and that helps me remember. So, all right, uh, just a few different derivative problems, nothing crazy um, in these. I think probably we can do these all at once. So, um, in part A, we're actually going to have to use the chain rule. So, uh, be a little careful. Anytime you have, uh, like, sine of x squared, what that means is sine of x all being squared. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just use the chain rule on this. So we'll take f prime. And again, uh, the chain rule just says the 2 comes out front. We leave the inside alone. So that would bump down to the first power, which I'm not going to write. Uh, and then the derivative of sine would just be cosine. Um, so there's really not much of anything to do in ways of simplification here. Um, I think so I would just leave that alone, so there's our derivative. So let's see, part B, this is just again, just, just knowing the formulas. So for part B, let's flip this over. So it's just a do you know your, your formulas type of problem. So when we take the derivative of cosecant, again, that was negative cosecant x times cotangent x. So the derivative of cotangent, well, let's see, tangent was secant squared, so this is negative cosecant squared x. So the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. So really the two negatives here will make a positive. Those will make a positive. And we could even write this maybe. We could put the sine x all the way out front. And then um, you could factor a cosecant out of here, or excuse me, uh, a cosecant, yes. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it alone. So, All right, so there's our derivative um, for part B. And let's look at our last example here, part C. Again, pretty, pretty straightforward as far as derivatives go. Grab another sheet of paper. Um, so we can probably just squeeze this one in here. Um, so this is just square root of 2 over 3 times secant x. Well, again, if we take the derivative of this, the square root of 2 over 3, we just leave that alone. And then we just multiply by the derivative of secant x, which is just secant x tangent x. And again, there's not really a lot to simplify at this point, so um, I would just leave it alone. And again, uh, now we've got our derivative. 